Well, it all began for me when I was in my second year in college. I was a sports and fitness studies student. I was running, I was training, I was fit. But I was getting these awful headaches and my vision started to blur. I get these shadows over my eyes, which were very, very bad. I, I had trouble reading. I had trouble catching a football one day and I missed it and it hit me on the head and everybody laughed. And it was the embarrassment that made me go to the hospital the first time. So I went to the hospital. I rang my parents. They were in Ireland. I was in University of Bedfordshire in England. So they, I said, I'm going over to the hospital. Something to do with my eyes. No big deal. I felt great. So after about 10 minutes in a waiting room with 30 people, I got taken in before everyone. So that's the alarm bell started ringing slightly then. And after a load of tests, they kept putting all these drops in my eyes. Something went down the back of my throat and I started to gag and said, listen, we'll take you to a room, do a few tests. And it was there that they did my blood pressure. And it should be like 120 over 70. Mine was 190 over 218 and then bang, they started getting very alarmed and they lied me down, told me I was, you know, potentially a high risk of having a stroke. Within two weeks after doing a biopsy and doing different tests, they realised I had chronic end-stage renal failure. So if your kidneys stop working, you will certainly die within a few weeks if you don't have replacement treatment. So the replacement treatment could be dialysis or it could be a transplant. And a few days later, due to the problems weren't going away, I had to start dialysis. So they had to put a line in my neck, which they couldn't get. So they had to go to my groin, which was remarkably uncomfortable. And they started dialysis that day. So within the space of a week, I went uh, going out with friends, having a great time, studying sports, playing sports, to having to go to a hospital every two days. And then they start talking about transplant where they you know, they'd be opening me up and putting in a kidney which would have belonged to somebody else. And I think it was too much for me at that time to, to understand. A kidney transplant is the transplantation of one of an organ from a donor, who may be a live donor or a deceased donor, taking that organ and implanting it into the recipient with kidney failure. I got a call at seven o'clock in the morning. I was Normally when I woke up, you know, I was going to the bathroom then. I had to go to the bathroom. The phone came in and said, hello, this is the transplant coordinator. I said, hold on a minute. And I just handed the phone to my father who was close by. And I went to the toilet and he came rushing in. It's the transplant, you know, we're, we're ready to go. They, they want you up there immediately. And I packed up my few things and we rushed to Dublin. We had a guard that escort right through Dublin city, which was, you know, it was an amazing thing to see. So I was all very excited about it. It was a very exciting time. So when you wake up, I have a line here, a drip here, a drip here, and I have, of course, the cats there, which was, to me, the worst thing imaginable. I found the first few days very difficult because you are in pain. You have a morphine drip, which my finger just went like this. It only went off every seven or eight minutes, but I wasn't taking any chances. It was just going all the time. I represented Ireland, and that was one of the biggest things in my life at the time because my role models in matters of health were all in their 60s and 70s. When I look around the room at, on dialysis, you know, I'm looking at them saying, all right, well, I'm like them, you know. So it took going to these transplant games for me to see other role models. You know, I did cycling. I said, uh, you know, I used to cycle at school. I was quite fit and healthy. So I'd probably win the thing, you know. This was my idea, going to the transplant games. I brought a bike and everything. And I came third last. I got absolutely destroyed by everybody. And I'm looking at these other men and saying, thinking to myself, Right, they look the same as me, we, we have similar body types, but yet they're f so fit, so active, so outgoing. And it was only then I realised that I had kidney failure, I didn't have heart failure, lung failure, my legs, my arms, my brain, everything else was working fine. So I wasn't sick, I had a health issue. And then after the first year, you know, a few results weren't going well, and then three months time went back and they were kind of a bit worse, and a bit worse. If the kidney fails are two main causes. One is rejection, and this is when the body rejects the organ because it's not the same tissue type as they are. And that's been the huge challenge in transplantation is to understand and treat rejection. So research looking at specific targets in the immune process 
is so important. And in that regard, animal research, I think, is, the, is one of the ways forward because we are able to produce animals with specific immune variation. So we can create an animal that doesn't have normal immunity. We can use that animal to test the rejection process. We're sorry, there's nothing we can do about it. You're, we're going to have to have the kidney removed to transplant nephrectomy. Nephrectomy, that was a new word. I hadn't come across that one yet. So that was, <clears throat> getting kidney failure was a shock. Losing a kidney transplant uh, at 22, whatever, that was, that was a low point because I knew exactly what that meant. The morning after the operation, I was wheeled into the dialysis unit. All the blood pressure noises, I heard them again, and surrounded by older people again. And that was, I would think that was the worst time for me. You know, getting kidney failure was no big deal because I didn't know what it was. It was just life, get on with it. You know, I can't do anything about it. But I had, I had went through it, experienced it, suffered it, had a transplant and everything was going to be okay. You know, even then I didn't realise transplants on average last 10 to 15 years. I didn't know that. But the fact that I only got two years, you know, I hadn't even grown up. I was still only 22, 23. So that was, that was for me definitely the worst time. Although mice are much smaller than us, their biology is very similar to ours. They have the same organs and their immune systems work in a very similar way. So mice can be used as medical models to research into the process of organ rejection. So the secret has been to try to identify specific parts of the rejection process and try to come up with a drug or some sort of therapy that will treat that but still allow the, the, the patient to have immunity to infection. The mortality rate is much better now. When I first started doing transplants, maybe the, the mortality rate after a transplant was as high as 10%. It is now about 1%. So there's been massive progress. Much of it has been because we're using better anti-rejection agents. Not all of it, but much of it. And a lot of that development has come about by using animals. And then I went on the waiting list, there was a sense of hope again that, you know, I could get a transplant. But the numbers of people on the waiting list was just, had increased, you know, threefold since I'd lost the transplant. And I was spending all my time, every two days on dialysis and, you know, I had changed my mind that I was kind of very positive. It was, that was life, that was normal. You know, if ever I get a transplant, it'll become extraordinary. But at the time, that was the way it was. So I have to just deal with it, which I did. But I never expected another five years after going on the list before I get a transplant. You know, that was obviously, uh, despair was just under the surface. You know, even though I was happy and outgoing and everything is great, uh, just underneath the surface was very difficult, you know. And I was constantly asking the doctors, you know, what's the story of the waiting list? Uh, you know, you see, uh, when you're on a list like that, you see everyone else getting the transplant waiting list. All my friends from the transplant games, dialysis games were getting transplants and you're so happy for them. But secretly you're thinking, when am I going to get this transplant? So we got, I was halfway, I was exactly halfway from the west coast of Ireland to the east coast where the hospital is and I got the call. So obviously that was amazing. I rang my fiance, I said, listen, we're not going to go ring shopping. And she said, oh great, what is it now? Where, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I went, no, I'm going, on I'm going on holidays for two weeks to Beaumont. She went, oh, good for you, what? And it all came out, you know, she was over the moon. Obviously, in Ireland, we have this, it's the gift of life, the card, the donor card, you know, people carry this gift of life card. So the person whose kidney I got was obviously carrying this donor card and their family made the decision that, you know, you write a letter to the donor family through the transplant coordinator. You send them the letter, they make sure you don't give any personal detail, it's not done that way. And they forward the letter on to the, <coughs> the donor family. Now that was an incredibly difficult letter for me to write, you know, to show the gratitude that I had, especially after nine years on dialysis, especially after getting engaged, you know, but refusing to get married because I wasn't going to get married on dialysis. And what it meant to my whole family, you know, what it meant to me, I could go off and have a career. It meant so many things to fit into a letter, you know, so I spent a lot of time writing that letter and I put a lot into it, a lot of emotion, you know, it was, 
It was an emotional letter to write, very difficult. And uh, it's something I'm going to do probably every year because I think it's, they should be reminded of what the sacrifice that they made, uh, the difference it made to someone's life like me. It's been over two years since I had the transplant. Life is great. I got married. The only hiccup I tell people is, yeah, I had to get married. So I got married uh, five months ago in May 2013. You know we can't edit that out, don't you? <laughs> I always say that. She's well used to it. But May 2013, I got married. You know, we had a remarkable day. We went on a lovely honeymoon. We travelled. All the things I couldn't do, refused to do, while on dialysis. 